advice to those fork in the road folks that mm -hmm. they've built up some stability in their lives, they've built up a few years so they have some life experience, but they also know they have some obligations. Mm -hmm. What's sort of a little checklist, and, and, and I don't think you're being discouraging at all, I think you're actually yeah. being uh, you know, quite encouraging because I mean life's expensive, things cost money, yeah. and, and yeah. but at the same time knowing that you also want to live a life that's fulfilling. Right. So what would you tell, let's suppose there's a fork in the road couple right now and you're just medium for coffee, what would you tell them? Um, <laughs> I've had this conversation many times and whenever I'm sitting at someone who's sort of standing between where they are now and, 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 and their first film or their first passion project, you know, I, I don't want to limit it just to films because for a lot of people it's, it's it, maybe it's writing their first screenplay, maybe it's producing their first television pilot or any number of sort of ambitious projects, not just feature length films. Um, there's that expression, go big or go home. Um, I think you should go small or go home. On your first project, do something that, that is not so ambitious that you're not gonna make it to the finish line. Because I, the only thing worse uh, than a film that's not, you know, that's maybe not as successful as the filmmaker had hoped, is a film that doesn't get finished. I mean, that's just, the thought of that, like, rips my heart out. You know, you get a film that's halfway done and then you walk away from it. Or a screenplay that's two-thirds of the way done and they didn't quite finish for whatever reason. Whew. I mean, that's, if you're gonna really take that leap, do something that you know you have the ability to finish. Um, you either you need to you need to have a great story that you love that you're in love with. Um, you need to have the technical chops to see it through to the end. Um, you need partners. If you don't have all the funding or or all the pieces that are important, make sure you have them. Um, and maybe more important, most importantly, is you need friends and colleagues who are willing to look at early cuts or read early versions of a screenplay and tell you if it's any good or not. I mean, that's really important. Um, we had all those things when we made our first film. Um, and probably more important than anything, my brother and my best friend encouraged us to take that leap and said, look, we have a little bit of money. We can lend you some money to get the ball rolling, which they did. and. Um, and, and that was tremendously helpful. We paid him back. I wrote my, I wrote my brother a check for $100,000 after we sold Wordplay, which is, really felt great. Cool. Um, and, and I think the last thing, I mean, the one other thing I would, I would encourage people to do is to really constrain themselves. Give yourself a time limit, give yourself some deadlines, and work within them. So when we started Wordplay, the star of that film is a, is a man named Will Shorts, who's the editor of the New York Times Crossword Puzzle. And uh, we, we pitched our idea to him. I just I called the New York Times and left him a voicemail, and he called me back. That was the beginning of that film. Um, but I told him what we had in mind, and he said to me, he said, well, he said, this sounds really fun. Um, and I, I just want to tell you, there's a team that's, three or four years into making this very same sort of project, but they're not done yet. And I, I don't know, haven't heard from them in a while. I, I, don't, I don't know where they are on this. He said, so the, the one thing I would ask you is, if you're gonna make this movie, I'd like it to be done in a year. Because then, you know, it's not too much work on him and we'll create some momentum and we won't stop till we finish it. A year after we had that conversation, we were together at Sundance with the film. And, and that's really important. When I hear that a film is six or seven or eight years in the making, unless it's Hoop Dreams or Ken Burns' The Civil War or something, an epic film. Sherman's March. <laughs> sure, if it's something that's just a giant film that needs all that time, great, more power to you. Most films are not like that. And once you lose that momentum, it's really hard to get it back. Um, it's like going on a road trip and stopping every 10 miles. I mean, eventually you're just gonna turn around and go back. 
Um, I just, um, I was just uh, did a program with Sundance um, where a bunch of filmmakers traveled to China and um, um, met other Chinese filmmakers and we spent a week together and it was really wonderful. <clears throat> and I was really surprised to hear that Joe Beanie, who's, uh, he's Werner Herzog's editor, they've done 20 films together. Joe told me that that Werner is the fastest filmmaker he knows. I mean, they cut movies in like six weeks, maybe eight weeks, sometimes a little longer, but I mean, they're fast. And Werner is not interested in spending two years in the edit room. You know, Joe's an amazing editor, Werner's an amazing storyteller, they get together, they bang it out, and they move on. And I, I think that that's, you know, that's an important, yeah, you know, that's that's a very important ingredient if you want to be productive and you want to make a lot of these kinds of movies. Well, aside from money, what do you think it is that people hem and haw? Is it is it fear of getting something out there because it's not perfect? You mean like sort of what keeps people from taking that leap and? and yeah, and and doing it so fast. I mean, again, aside from money, which is a huge factor. So sure. let's say money's not a problem, or they're doing it themselves. What is it that keeps people kind of tied to it and, and just not releasing it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think once people start making their film, their first film, um, you know, you got to pay the bills. You got you to gotta buy the groceries. You have to sort of support yourself while you're doing it, which is challenging. But I think a bigger hurdle is fear. I, you know, I think that people are afraid that what they're doing is not good enough. Um, and here's the, here's the dirty little secret. Every filmmaker is deep down very afraid on opening night. Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. You're so close to the material by then that it's possible to know if it worked or not. Um, <clears throat> I'm constantly amazed at how many classic films I've heard about where opening night, everyone thought the movie was a bomb. Jaws is a very good example. Richard Dreyfuss was quoted in several articles about, God, this movie took forever to make and this young director and ugh, I don't know what we have here. you know. And he stormed out of the theater opening night saying, he did it, he did it. It's, it's, it's a miracle. This movie is unbelievable. And I'm sure that two hours earlier, Steven Spielberg was sitting there wondering if he was gonna have a career or not. You know, it's, these, these, these things are hard to make. It's hard to make. It's hard to make a movie and it's hard to tell a good story. So put those two together and you know, welcome to show business. That's really what this is about. Um, and again, I feel like if you're surrounded by people you trust and you have a good team, a good small team, you should make your film as well as you can, as quickly as you can, have a couple of screenings with six or eight people who come over and give you honest feedback, address those notes and get it out there, you know. Um, um, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you only get good at it if you practice at it, and you just have to keep you just have to keep practicing. Um, I think that's how you get good.